Today we're going to take a look at reflecting over the x-axis. In class, you did a lab of reflecting over the x-axis using a mirror, that geometry tool that we laid across the x-axis and we looked through that mirror to see where our object would fall on the other side of that x-axis. So our objective is I can draw the reflection of a given figure on a coordinate plane and determine the properties preserved. Today in class, you talked about the properties preserved and you tried to come up with a rule for reflecting over the x-axis. And tonight, I'm just going to make sure that you have that rule. In a reflection, an object is flipped over a line of symmetry. Today we're going to focus on reflecting a figure over the x-axis. So here, point A is reflected over the x-axis. And the image is A prime. So it would be like if A was looking into a mirror. So if you're here and there you are, point A, that's you, like a little person. You can make yourself a little person there. And if you looked into a mirror, there you are down there. There's your little person down there looking right back up at you. So we're going to just focus on what happens to the coordinates when we reflect over the x-axis. So if we look at a and a prime, if I take a look at my x-coordinate, my x-coordinate seem to stay the same. If I take a look at my y-coordinate from a to a prime, the only thing that happened was it changed sign. And that's actually the general rule. The general rule for reflecting a point over the x-axis is you keep the x-coordinate the same, and you change the sign of the y-coordinate. That Here it is in symbols, reflecting over the x-axis. xy becomes x, comma, and then you negate y. And what that symbol right there means is change the sign of y. So if y had been positive, after you reflect over the x-axis, its sign will be negative. But if your y-coordinate started as a negative, after you reflect over the x-axis, it will actually become a positive. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at an example to solidify that for you. Draw the image of trapezoid MNOP after reflection over the x-axis. Label the image using prime notation. So again, to reflect over the x-axis, we're going to remind ourselves the x-coordinate stays the same and the y-coordinate changes sign. So I'm going to go ahead and first take a look at our original m. There's our original m. So the coordinates of the original m are negative 7, negative 9. Negative 7, negative 9. Again, x-coordinate will stay the same. So if it was negative 7, it's still negative 7. The y-coordinate changes sign. So if it had been a negative 9, you change that to a positive 9. And there we go. That point right there will be m prime. So we label that m prime. That's what it means with prime notation. How far is m below the x-axis? Here's our line of symmetry, that x-axis. How far below the x-axis was m? Well, it was 9 units below, so how far above will it be? 9 units above. Let's go ahead and take a look at point n. Point n is negative 9 comma negative 3. Negative 9 comma negative 3. So what will n prime become? Well, when we reflect over the x-axis, the x-coordinate stays the same. So if it was negative 9, it remains negative 9. And the y-coordinate changes sign. So if it had been a negative 3, we go ahead and make it a positive 3. And there's n prime. So to label it with proper prime notation, n with that little dash, we know that means prime. And if you look, n was 3 units below the x-axis. So n prime, if you're looking into that mirror, will be 3 units above. Coordinates for O are negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. x stays the same. So if it was negative 2, it remains negative 2, and the y-coordinate simply changes sign. Negative 3 becomes a positive 3. And there we have O, and I will label it O prime. And finally, let's take a look at P. P was negative 4, negative 9. Negative 4, 
negative 9. So for p prime, you keep the x coordinate. If it was negative 4, you keep a negative 4. Negative 9 becomes a positive 9. So there you go. And there's p prime. So then you would connect up those points, n to m, m to p, p to o, o prime to n prime. And I just do a quick double check. I look here and I say, okay, here that's one, two, three units. So I just want to make sure up here it's still one, two, three units. Good. And then I look here, I say, okay, this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units on the image. Let's hope the original was also seven units long because length is preserved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that for me is I just try to do like a quick, quick check. And I say, okay, it looks pretty good. Sometimes I then check out the angles. I look here and I'm like, okay, M was an obtuse angle. It was greater than 90. So I look up here. I'm like, oh, good. M is still an obtuse angle greater than 90. I might look at N and I say, oh, N was a cute angle, a cute little angle. Oh, yay. N is still a cute little angle. Angle measure also remains the same. So let's just go ahead and be sure we understand the properties that are preserved. First of all, distance is preserved, and I showed you that on the last slide. For example, if here this is two units, one, two units long, after you reflect it, it will still be one, two unit long, two units long. That works for all of your line segments when you're reflecting. Angle measure is preserved. So for instance, if this is a 90 degree angle right here, if that's 90 degrees, guess what? When you reflect it, it's still going to be a 90 degree angle. This is a rigid motion. The lengths of the side roots remain the same. The angle measures remain the same. Because the lengths of your sides remain the same, your perimeter remains the same. So for instance, the perimeter of this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the perimeter of that is 16 units. So the perimeter here should still be 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 units perimeter or the measure around the outside remains the same. And the area, the amount of space that the figure takes up should remain the same. So we can just check that out. The area of this, how many squares fill up the space? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the area of that is 12 square units. It takes 12 squares to fill up that space, so this had better also be 12 square units. Area remains the same with reflections. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh good, that area is still 12 square units. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit of reinforcement from today's lab that you completed in class. It's just a rule, if you don't have that mirror, it's a rule to help you. Keep the sign of x, keep x exactly the same, change the sign of y, and now we've gone over the properties preserved. Take care. Have a good night.